The Indian workers never got to put their finishing touches on the castle. In 1926, while on a trip to Portugal to collect the elevator intended for the castle, William Kelly Smith passed away suddenly of pneumonia. Distraught, his family sold off all their lands and returned back to England, leaving the castle incomplete. Despite the fact, the castle's exotic architectural influences survived and continue to fascinate many today. You got the Mughal, the British, and the Muslim as well. Here we've got the original bricks, and further up here on the archway, we've got a crescent moon and stars, an indicator of the Muslim influence that is here in this castle, which indicates to me that William Kelly Smith was a very well-traveled man and was a man ahead of his times in terms of pioneering this kind of mixed architecture influences. Smith made his fortune at a time when the state of Parak was still largely undeveloped. Banks were scarce, and security was a serious concern for many businessmen. To protect his family, he built special features into his castle to hide his wealth, as well as to escape from armed robbers. So we've got a spiraling staircase that goes down through here, and it looks like this connects to another room over here. Now we move into William Master Room. Do you see any unusual thing about this room? No, not in this room. I don't see anything in particular. Nothing here either. What is this room over here? This is the bathroom. I've got a feeling right over here, we're going to find something quite incredible. Yup, here we've got a spiral staircase leading out to the yard. Oh, wow. This is the way we came into yeah, the, the yeah, castle. Yeah. Now, typically, a lot of English castles have dungeons. Does this one have something like that? Yes. Kelly's castle contains several underground dungeons where Smith was said to hide his wealth. It is rumored that a series of four tunnels also run beneath the castle, connecting it to its surrounding estates. This is supposed to be the wine cellar. It looks like he did a lot of entertaining. Oh, right over here. This would have been the entrance into the dungeon. Right. But it's obviously sealed off today. I mean, if I want to explore the dungeons, how do I get down there? Well, there are another entrance that uh, you might be able to peep inside. This doesn't exactly scream, I'm a tunnel. We've got a set of stairs right. leading down in here. If I start digging here and unearthing this dirt, yeah. I'll probably find steps a series of down. steps going down. I've got one stair right here, uncovered. Oh. Initially, I thought that as I was digging, I would uncover step after step, kind of descending downward. But after I cleared out one full step, I found that there was actually a much larger space. I would say a one meter span or three feet going across like a platform. So I've cleared out the area and um, I discovered a perfectly six inch diameter circle. I suspect that underneath this platform would be other would be a trail possibly leading to some of the other connecting tunnels. If local folklore is right, this opening could even be the doorway to a tunnel that leads to an old Indian temple William Kelly Smith built for his workers. A sign of Smith's influence remains on the temple's rooftop amongst Indian gods. It's a small but important reminder of the impact he's had on the local community and Ipo's long history.
Having checked out some incredible hidden cities from Malaysia's colonial and World War II eras, I get an unexpected lead to a recent archaeological dig into the country's prehistoric history. And it lies in Bujang Valley in the state of Kedah. Malaysia first made archaeological headlines in 1991 with the discovery of the Perak Man, the oldest and the most complete human skeleton ever found in Peninsula Malaysia, dating back over 11,000 years. Barely 18 years later, they are at the forefront of another breakthrough. Kedah's Bujang Valley may be home to one of Southeast Asia's earliest inhabitants to practice iron smelting. In 2009, a team of archaeologists unearthed an exciting discovery. They found remnants of an ancient civilization dating as far back as almost 2,000 years lurking within this valley. And right now, I'm about to find out more. I meet up with Dr. Mokhtar Saidin, head of the archaeological team in Bujang Valley. Dr. Mokhtar and his team first did a landscape survey over the valley in 2006 that yielded 97 possible dig locations. In 2009, the team started excavation on only 10 of these sites and made an incredible discovery. Two iron smelting furnaces and three jetties that likely helped transport the iron dating back to 2nd century AD. Dr. Mokhtar believes that this iron smelting civilization may have been on an ancient trade route that predates even that of the Silk Road in China. This is the first site we excavated in 2009, where we found the structure of the platform jetty just nearby the old Sungai Batu River. Up from this hill, you seem to have a flat surface up here, right? Yes. And so most likely this was a loading, unloading dock? Yeah. And then we see the natural contour of the land? Yes. Leading into the river? Yes. So this is kind of where they would have maybe... Yeah, yeah. The step down. the boat? Yeah. And then yep. unload yep. and yep. load. All right, so this river... Back in the day, it would have been yep. a much larger river. Large river. This is just one meter. But before, it's 100 meters away. Depth is about 20 meters. And this jetty is the first one we found in Southeast Asia. It really show the function as a transportation uh, base. Dr. Mokhtar suspects that the new site near this ancient jetty may be another iron smelting furnace. The team needs to collect more relics to verify this. Just like crime scene investigators, scientists use cutting edge techniques to analyze the relics closely. The man who makes the final call on whether the latest site is really an iron smelting furnace is Dr. Stephen Chia from the University Science Malaysia Research Lab. Now, normally members of the public aren't allowed into here for security reasons, but we've been granted special access to check out the process. What they're working on now are rock samples taken from ancient bricks at the suspected iron smelting furnace in Bujang Valley. They find that the samples contain sand, an important clue. It was common practice to introduce sand into bricks to create structures that will not crumble under intense heat, as is the case in iron smelting. But this result alone is not enough. Dr. Chia conducts another test just to be sure. This time, he studies the type of iron deposit unearthed from the site. These are some of the results. It seems to be good quality iron that yeah. they're using uh, at the site. So with this information, Dr. Stephen, what can you infer from this data about the society or the civilization that was found there? This seems to indicate that they were actually uh, smelting the iron at the site. The majority of the blocks of iron that were found have been traded okay. to the traders that came in in exchange for ceramics or other stuff that they brought. 
So they had basically like they had the natural resources right around yeah. them, and they were able to manufacture it there, mm -hmm. as well as export, export it, it yes. out. Oh, okay. And my uh, intuition is that uh, most of these people have actually brought the technology knowledge here, and then maybe uh, used the local labor forces to mm. to work on the uh, iron using the technology that they know, that, that they know. Being at the site and here at the lab has really impressed upon me how archaeologists are just like detectives, piecing together the clues they have to form a larger picture. I mean, just imagine, over 2,000 years ago in Bujang Valley was a city that has been lost to us in time. But today, researchers are retelling the stories of their ancient ancestors. In many ways, I've also played the role of detective in my journey through Malaysia. Uncovering forgotten prisons and forts in Penang. Retracing lost battlefields in Ipoh from the Second World War. Even unearthing the secrets of a tragic English castle. I've seen an entirely different side to this Southeast Asian paradise. And while my adventure here is over, I'm pretty sure Malaysia and its hidden histories will continue to surprise us.